What is going on, Bitwise Guy here? I am coming to you live through the power of Boogie's internet. I love that guy. I've been watching him for a while. Um, but anyway, getting on. Uh, so this will be the eighth tutorial in the Rust installment series. Um, in this video, we're going to be covering numeric types. Um, as you might have noticed, and I think as I mentioned in another video, a few videos back, um, I'm going. I'm going through in the order of the Rust book. The reason I'm doing it in the order of the Rust book is that so when uh, I don't have a video um, out for you guys, you guys can just follow along with the Rust book, which is available freely online. Alright, so let's get started. So first of all, what is a numeric type? Well, a numeric type is simply a type that can store some kind of numeric value, meaning a number. So that might be 200, that might be 27.0, that might be minus 365, basically any kind of number like that. Alright, so what I'm going to do, as always, is I'm going to read the little blurb that Rust provides in the in the book. You'll have to excuse the, um, if I accidentally take a drink break, sometimes my throat gets a little dry and it makes it a little bit hard for me to uh, continue talking. Okay, Rust has a variety of numeric types in, uh, in a few categories, signed and unsigned, fixed and variable, and floating point and integer types. These types consist of two parts, the category and the size. Uh, for example, uh, U16 is an unsigned type with 16 bits of size. Um, more bits lets you have bigger numbers. So we'll get into that in a little bit and I'll, I'll probably draw you guys a table. If a number literal has nothing uh, to cause its type to be inferred, it defaults. So um, the, the important thing to note there is that uh, Rust is a statically analyzed language. So what happens is when you press compile, if you don't tell Rust specifically what type you're using, Rust will simply go, oh, I think that the type that would be best suited to that um, uh, assignment or that, that uh, the number or the, 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 the data thing that you've put on the right hand side uh, would be an integer or it would be a floating point uh, you know, type. So, so that's basically what it means by it's inferring the type. All right. So, and in, if you guys have got the book open, which I highly recommend that you do, um, it's got two little examples there. Um, it says uh, 42 will be inferred to a type of integer. Uh, 1.0 will be inferred to a type of a floating point number. Here's a list of numeric types with their link documentation in the standard library. So, the standard library is the the library um, that the Rust developers provide to us, excuse me, and it gives you a whole bunch of containers that uh, allow you to store numeric uh, values. Uh, in the in the Rust standard library, we get the following: we get an integer, uh, we get an integer, 8 bit, 16 bit, and 32 bit, and 64 bit. If you're on a 64 bit system, uh, we get an 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit, and 64 bit unsigned integer. We get two very special types that are unique to the Rust language called I size and U size. Uh, and we also get a 32-bit, and if you're on a 64-bit system, a 64-bit floating point number. Okay, so let's go and let's just read on for a bit, and then we'll get stuck straight into the whole um, the whole shebang of actually developing some stuff. Uh, a really important topic that I need to cover. So firstly, I'll just give my little uh, imp uh, interpretation of how to explain this, and then I'll read the Rust, uh, the book one, and we can kind of break that down as well. So... There's two important things in um, in programming in general, and that is signed and unsigned. Now you have data structures, and um, let's just take a uh, a single byte, right? Okay, so we take a single byte. Now, what's the difference between an unsigned and a signed byte? Well, an unsigned byte can represent the values from zero to two hundred fifty-five, whereas a signed byte can represent the uh, values of negative one hundred and twenty-eight to one hundred and twenty-seven. So the reason for this is quite simple. An unsigned byte only has to represent all the positive numbers. And if you notice something special about a signed byte, it said it has to represent both sides of the both sides of the um, of the negative sign, if you will. That means that it has to be able to represent from zero to one negative one hundred twenty-eight, and it also has to be able to represent uh, zero to one hundred twenty-seven. Now that actually fills up an entire byte, right? That's actually, if you add that up, that's actually two hundred fifty-five bytes, right? So it's important to note that that's why when you have a, um, a signed byte, 
your storage in the positive range will always be smaller than um, if you have an unsigned byte, uh, which is in the negative range. And this exact same principle applies to all data types, which is why I haven't specified uh, like an unsigned integer versus a signed integer um, because th essentially it applies all all the way through when you describe it as a byte. Now I'm going to give you um, Rust's explanation as I think it's also really good and it does indeed put it into terms of an integer. Integer types come in two, ver uh, in two varieties, signed and unsigned. To understand the difference, let's consider a number with four bits in size. Sorry, four bits of size. A signed 4-bit number will let you store numbers from 8, sorry, negative 8 to plus 7. Signed numbers use two complete representations. An unsigned 4-bit number, since it does not need to store negatives, can store values from 0 to 15. So, um, what that basically means is you can store an integer value of 0 to 15 in the positive range if your integer is unsigned. Just like we can store a, um, we can store the bits, um, 0 to 255 uh, in our unsigned uh, versus signed integer. Alright. Unsigned types use a U for their category and signed types use an I. So that's basically the prefix on the number. So I'm um, sorry, prefix on the uh, on the type. So if you see a if you see a type that says I32, that basically says in Rust that that's a 32-bit integer. Okay, now let's get into some programming that I know you're all really hanging out to do. So, what we'll do is go over to our terminal and we will make a new project. So we'll say, as always, we'll say cargo new and we'll say um, learn underscore int. Uh, actually, no, let's just do learn numerics. Um, now, what I want to stress is, and something I completely forgot to stress last time, is um, when you do cargo new, you want to add this dash dash bin. Um, we'll get into that more, what that basically does, but uh, in, in short, when you do bin, you're essentially doing it for a binary. Um, it hasn't mattered too much for us. When, you're doing, when you leave that off, you're essentially telling the cargo compiler to create a library template which would be perfect for uploading to, um, say, crates.io. But since we're not doing that, we'll just put dash dash bin um, to be on the safe side of everything. So we'll do that and we'll say, we got our new thing. Now I using um, Adam, so we'll come over to Adam here and um, we'll say, we'll open up our project here and you'll see we've got this main.rs already generated for us. Um, so you can see we've got our code here and what we'll do as we always do is we will cd into that directory, um, so there, and we'll say cargo uh, build, and we built it successfully and we'll say cargo run just to make sure our compiler works. Sure enough, hello world prints out just nicely. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, this is going to be actually some really short uh, development right here. We're going to do um, for, we're going to do an integer, we're going to do a floating type, um, and we're going to do signed and we're going to do unsigned. Uh, and we'll print all of those out and we will try and make some compiler errors, and then we'll explain exactly what's going on with those compiler errors. Alright, so first thing that I want to do is I'm going to make my, uh, I'm just going to call them first, second, third, and fourth, because I'm not very creative tonight. Uh, let first, and we'll say, um, I 32, uh, we'll say equal to, um, I don't know, 5. And we'll say let second, um, and we'll say U 32, and we'll say that's equal to, um, I don't know, 10. And we will say um, F. Uh, third, whoops, sorry, let uh, third f32 equal to um, 1.9. And what we'll do is we'll say uh, print ln, we'll use our macro print ln, and we'll say um, our numbers, no, actually we'll say first, uh, and we'll do the string replace, and we will do... Um, comma, we'll say first, we'll say print ln, and uh, we'll say second, second, I almost forgot, we'll say that, and we'll say that, and we'll say print ln, I hope that's right, uh, nope, round the wrong way, sorry, 
So we'll say like this. All right, and I'll fix this one up as well. Third. And finally, we will do our third one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that this builds. So we will save this out when we have a error in our syntax. My bad. So I have something called Rust Format installed. Very, very helpful. All right, cool. So no issues there. All right, so we'll say cargo build. Our code builds fine. We'll reset this terminal window so you guys can see. We'll say cargo run. Cool. So we got our first three types printed out onto the screen. As you can see, these are numeric types. So we get first equals five, second equals ten, and third equals one point nine. Now, let's try and mix things up a bit. Let's just say that I uh, I'm a beginner programmer and I'm wearing a blindfold and I decide, hey, Mr. Bitwise guy, I want to put five point two in this thing. Well. Actually, you can't do that. Now, straight away, you'll get this error if you have Rust format. But let's just pretend we don't even have Rust format, right? So let's go to our compiler and we'll say uh, cargo run, which will automatically build our project for us. And we'll say, oh no, we get an error. What's going on here? Well, the compiler is really friendly with us and it tells us. It said, I expected an integer 32, but I didn't find an integer 32. Instead, what I found was a floating point variable. And then it tells you, hey, this is the error code. If you want to go look that up, um, this will probably help you find out. But as you can see here, it tells you, ah, this is what we went wrong. We, went, we tried to put 5.2 into a 32-bit uh, signed integer. So, the moral of the story there is, you cannot put 5.2 into an integer, since an integer is not a floating point type. Now, why is it called a floating point type, you might wonder? Well, pretty simple. The way I like to think of it is, it's called a floating point type because it's got this little decimal point there, right? So, the this is your, in, in computer science terms, basically, this is your integer part of the number, um, and then this is your... Um, this is your significant bits. It's called the significant bits of uh, information, right? So everything after this, how many significant bits do you have? So um, in other languages, you might have doubles, floats, all those kinds of things. So we've tried to put more than the uh, than the container is able or uh, is able to understand or uh, hold. So now there's one more thing that I want to explain to you guys, and that's this. You see this little I versus U32 thing right here. So what is this all about? Well, let's just try and do something here. So let's just say that I wanted to put the number negative 10 into the I32. So we'll save this and we'll go and build this. So we'll say cargo run and sure enough we get the, we get the number negative 5 as our first number that prints out. But let's just say I also wanted my second one to be a negative number. Well, if you're paying attention before when I explained the whole range of values that you can store in an unsigned versus signed integer, you'll know that this shouldn't work. And in fact, it won't. So if I put a number t negative 10 there and I save this, you'll say unary negation of unsigned integer. That's just a fancy way of saying you shall not put an unsigned uh, number inside of a... Uh, sorry, you shall not put a signed number inside of an unsigned type. Okay, that's pretty much all we have for now. Um, I will be extending this uh, tutorial in part 9 a little bit. We're going to be going into inferential types of numbers, so uh, how it's uh, inferred, and more importantly, which is unique to Rust, uh, I size versus U size. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, smash that dislike or like button, whichever one you feel like on the day. Um, I know the YouTube community is pretty crazy like that. Um, and if you like my videos and you want to follow along, subscribe. Um, I am a subscribe whore like that, uh, but it really does actually help me um, get all my content out there further. It's just the way that YouTube's horrific uh, ranking algorithm works, um, where they no longer rank you by relevance. It's just how many friggin' subscribers do you have? Um, but whatever. Anyway, um, have a good night, guys. Have good holidays. And I will be putting up another video probably tonight as well. So, peace.